Praise the Lord. Can we all stand to our feet? Let's all stand to our feet before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I don't know if you guys were here last night. If anyone here, could I have hands raised for those who were here last night? Did you see what God did in this place? Man, he's just getting started. Are you excited for what God's going to do, not just in this place, but in your life? Let's hear Jesus. Let's praise Jesus. Let's hear hallelujah. Let's hear the name of Jesus. Cry out, Jesus.
church right now just clap those hands keep them clapping we need those chains to fall come on let the chains fall come on let the chains fall oh. let the chains fall let the chains
if you're thankful for God's amazing grace in your life, this is a good time to shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. That, 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 that's the best you got this morning. And you know you shouldn't even be here tonight if it wasn't for His grace. You should be dead a hundred times over. And that's the best shout you have. That's the best clap you have. Amen. If you're thankful for God's amazing grace in your life, this is a good time to... Amen. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for your presence in this place here this morning. And we've come with grateful hearts, thanksgiving in our hearts for what you have done, for what you are doing in our lives, and for what you are about to do. Precious Holy Spirit, we ask you to have your way, continue to have your way in this place. Your church, your people, your will to be done, your name to be glorified. To you be all the glory and all the honor. We thank you. We thank you. And we pray once again here this morning, not one of us to walk away from here and leave this place the same way we came in. Touch, heal, deliver, restore, save for your glory. For we know that with you all things are possible. All things are possible. And we don't serve a dead God. We serve a resurrected king. And we thank you tonight. We know and we believe that the same power that raised Jesus from the grave, that resurrection power, is the same power that's here this morning for us. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And everybody that's watching online, also thank you for joining us once again. To God be the glory. Amen. Um, just real quickly, um, uh, uh, who's here last night? Woo! I just want to encourage you. I'm going to say it again. I said it the week before. Yeah, if you're able to make it, you need to be here on Saturday nights. God is moving in a very powerful way. Um, uh, the fire of God's falling in this place. I mean, it was just, again, I mean, God's, we're, we're, we're moving, amen? And because we're, we've made a decision to move forward, all in amen god is honoring it and god is confirming his word he's confirming everything that we're doing with power and um, um the time is now amen uh, I, I said the time is now and we are the ones that god's called in these last days and if we don't do it who's going to do it amen there's work to be done so um to god be the glory for what happened last night once again all the glory to the lord the outreach in the morning was phenomenal um to everybody again thank you for joining us and being part of that um amen uh just real quickly i just want to um um this coming up this week the schedule for this week monday we got prayer at seven o'clock pastor Tony, you want to say anything for prayer or like you know, anything on your heart for you know just you just keep we'll come up here and just say something so it's, tell, tell them to, Praise God. Church, since uh, we started, um, we're going into our third year on Monday night prayers. We're going into our third year. And it was on the third day. It was on the third day that there was victory. That we still celebrate today, that victory. And that same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the, day, from the dead on the third day is that same power. In this third year, that God's going to start moving in a mighty way. And I believe it's being confirmed. The move of God begins with the people of God. Amen. So, come on Monday nights. Come on Monday nights. And let's sow in someone else's life for what we want done in our life. Amen. Amen. As we refresh others, we will be refreshed, church. Amen. As we stand in the gap, God is looking for someone to stand in the gap. For someone to say, yes, Lord, I will. I'll stand in that gap for my loved ones, for the neighborhood, the community, for this country. I will stand in the gap, and we will see the fire of God just fall on this place. So... Tomorrow, 7 o'clock, be here. 
be here and just be ready to worship and pray. Because you might be the one that's coming up here and praying for somebody. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, God impressed on my wife and, and, and on my heart, praying on Monday nights, plus we're fasting on Mondays. Okay? And I say it humbly. Not to say, look at me, look what we're doing, or look what, no. We're praying and we're fasting on Mondays for breakthrough. For breakthrough. Because if we do what we've already done, we're only going to get what we already have. And I don't know about you guys, but I want more. I want different. Amen. And if it's in the word of God, it can be in the house of God. Amen. If it happened here, it can happen here. God bless you. See you tomorrow night. Amen. Seven o'clock. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Uh, 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 um, and then on Wednesday, we're going to start um, our new series, um, Battlefield of the Mind. Joyce Meyer. Amen. Now watch this. Um, we're going to have um, usually um, our small groups on Wednesday. We usually just um, we have, um, um, you know, the video that we watch, you know, a short video of the lesson. And then we break into groups. Um, this coming up uh, Wednesday, we're going to have the worship team is going to be here. We're going to have live worship. Um, and then what we're going to do to, to, to lay the foundation, I, I really believe this is very important um, for where God wants to take us. We need to make sure that we got this right. Because if this isn't right, then this isn't right. And if this isn't right, we can't get to where God wants to take us. Because this is, this is where the battle is. And, and the Bible says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of understanding. So if you really want to, and if we want to move forward, um, the knowledge is going forth, but it's our responsibility to make a choice, to make ourselves available to receive the information. Because how can we put action to our faith if we don't have the information from the Word of God to apply? And if we're not getting the information from the Word of God, we're getting information somewhere. So our next step is dictated, if it's not from the Word of God, the right information, it's dictated from the world's information, and that's where fear comes in, and then issues come in. And um, I like to say it like this, if, if we have the right mind or uh, um, the Word of God going in, then we have right living going out. We got victorious living going forward. Amen. So I can't emphasize, I, I, I have this heavy in my heart for the church to where God wants to take us. Prayer on Monday. Now, Wednesday, um, for the next so many weeks with this series, I believe this is going to help us bring clarity to where God's taking us and get that right thinking. Amen. And um, so we're going to start this Wednesday, and we're going to go to a conference that Joyce Meyer did on video on uh, to start off the, 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 the topic of Battlefield of Mind. So we're going to kick it off with worship, and then we're going to go to that video, and we're going to watch it corporately together. It's going to lay the foundation, and then the following week, we're going to get back to, like, the, the series of Battlefield of the Mind, watching short videos, and then breaking into groups, praying and, um, and sharing and, 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 um, and um, learning um, um, this teaching and getting it in our hearts. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Can someone say amen? So if you been coming i want to encourage I, I, I want to strongly encourage you be here this wednesday don't miss the beginning if you haven't been here i want to encourage you to be here this wednesday especially for this first one that's going to lay the foundation amen and i believe something um god's going to do something very special as we are um walking in obedience to what god's telling us to do amen praise god i want to go just even right now i just thought about this as i was walking up um you know we're talking about the, the mind and really if you know it, it, it's when you really when you, we make things very complicated but the reality is this if I can get my mind right I can get my life right if I can get this crazy mind right then I can get my life right it, it, do I got any crazies in the house am I and, and there's a battle that is raging every single day and 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 I'm reminded I just thought about this right now Joshua, um, real quick, let me just read this. I, I, I feel the Lord leading me to do this um, um, we're, uh, on, the, on the topic of, of, the, of the mind. Joshua chapter 1, 
starting in verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I give you every place you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert of Loab, Lebanon and from the great river of the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is, now watch this. This is God speaking to us right now, okay? Look at somebody say, God speaking to you. Uh, speak to yourself right now. God speaking to me. And remember, and prior to this, there was, there was, the Israelites had an opportunity, the same word, to possess the land. God had given them a word, and 12 spies went in to, to investigate and to, 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 to scout out the land. And 10 of them out of the 12, Joshua was not one of them, came back with a negative report because fear had taken over. And they said, yeah, it's exactly what God said. It's, 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 it's a land of, uh, of, of honey and, and, and fruit and just, I mean, I mean it, 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 it's exactly what God said. Uh, milk and honey is flowing. I mean, it's, it, it's exactly what God told us. But man, there's some giants in the land and we're like grasshoppers in their sight. So they did not possess the land back then because they allowed, watch this now, because, and where did, where, where did they lose the battle? The battle was not lost when they saw the giants. The battle was lost before that because their mind wasn't right. Ah, uh, you're not listening. Because Joshua turned around and said, you know, we can, we, we can do this, amen. God's given us a word because he had the right mind because he had the right heart, amen, and faith from the word of the Lord, he was ready to go. The others weren't. So the defeat took place before they left the house. You know, before you leave the house, that's where the battle is. Right before you leave the house in the morning, amen? And when we step out of the house, if we have right thinking, we're going to have right living that day. We're going to have victory that day. So watch this now. So now, so now God... Is trying to encourage them again and watch and this is a reminder now watch this because what he's trying to tell them here and what about what I'm about to read right here is he's letting Joshua know and so Joshua can tell the people the reason you failed before is because of this now watch this now verse 6 be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. He's saying, here's the key. This is why they failed back then. This is why, that's, this is why you came up short before. This is why... That generation missed it. This is where they, they, they failed and they came up short was because they didn't have the right mind, which means they didn't have the right heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It was a heart issue. And the Bible says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, but he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the Word of God, that's the fuel. That's the power. So you might see a giant in the land, whatever that giant might be, but when you're walking in faith, in confidence, in the Word of God, and who you are in God, and you know it, you're able to move forward and know if he's for me, who can be against me? If God gave me a word and this is where he wants me to go and this is the promise of God and this is my destiny and this is my purpose, then I'm going to have success. But the fuel is the word. And if I got the word going in, then I got the right heart and then I'm able to push forward. This is where the battle's at, the mind. So watch this. Watch this. Do not let... 
this book of the law depart from your mouth meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it then then you will be prosperous and successful you will be prosperous and successful have i not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be terrified do not be discouraged for the lord your god will be with you wherever you go do not be terrified do not be discouraged we deal with fear, discouragement, and all these other things when we don't got the right information going in. And he's saying, you're going to have success. I've given you a word. But if you meditate on my word and you got the right information going in, then you're going to get to the right destination. Right information, right destination. You know, I think about, um, we were just driving the other day, and, we put an address in, in the phone. What is that, Google Maps? And um, put in the information and, and the address. And then for some, you know, you, you press go finally, and then a voice comes, and, 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 and even though it's on the, on the thing, but then the voice comes and tells, you know, in so, in so much time or the, in, in a certain distance, you're going to take a left or you're going to turn right. And, and I'm like, oh, thank you. And, and, and it talks to you, amen? <laughs> And it, guides, and it guides you and leads you to your destination. Um, if, you, if you put, watch this, but if you put, and it gets you to that destination. I want you to see our mind is like, I was thinking about this. It's, 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 it's like that Google Maps. That's our mind. And if you put the right address in, you'll get to the right destination. But what we're doing and where we're coming up short is, have you ever put the wrong address? And then you realize, oh, I missed a letter or a number. Because it's like, this is not where we should be. Or, and you find yourself in the wrong place because you put in the wrong information. So the wrong information leads you to the wrong destination. Yeah, yeah. Our brain is like our phone, Google Maps, and when we put the Word of God in there, then we have the right information, which gets us to the right destination. The battle starts right here in our mind. And whatever we keep on allowing to penetrate our mind and when we do it over and over and repeat it whatever you're allowing access to your mind eventually because the word of God says and God says meditate on my word which means what in the Hebrew to meditate is to do over and over and over why because whatever you do over and over and over eventually will not be um, head knowledge it'll become heart knowledge and once it gets in the heart, it produces. If you look at the wrong, if you look at someone or something you shouldn't be looking at. In the beginning, it might not have the same effect immediately. You're able to shake it off or not respond or act on what you we're looking at. Why are you all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about? Someone's looking at their phone right now and saying, man, I got to get off that site. Uh, I just said it. Yeah. I just said it. Yeah, I know, I know. It's all right. That's real. So watch this. But you're in the right place, by the way. So please, amen. Praise God. Welcome to the trauma center, by the way. Um, but if you keep going back and you look at something you shouldn't be looking at, if you allow access to something that is not good for you and you do it repeatedly, eventually it's going to make its way into your heart. And once it hits the heart, then you start to act on what you're looking at. Before you weren't acting on it, you were, you were able to, to, to be able to, to stop and, 
and, and go, man, this isn't good, and I know this isn't right. But then because you stayed um, consistent in allowing the access that wasn't good for you, then eventually, even as much as you try to stop what you're about to do, you can't stop because it's in your heart now. And now it's producing fruit. Whatever you do over and over. I've said this many times. I'm going to say it again because I'm setting us up for Wednesday night in this series. How This is an important topic. The access to the heart starts with the ears and the eyes. Access to the brain is what you hear and what you're looking at. And whatever you're looking at and what you're, whatever you're listening at, whatever you're meditating, over and over, eventually will get to the heart. So God is reminding Joshua, I've given you this land. I am with you. But watch this. But he said, but, but that's not enough, Joshua, for you to know that I'm with you. You need to understand that if you're going to go the distance and you're going to be successful and you're going to take this land and fulfill your destiny and your purpose, you've got to be grounded in my word. The word has to be in you. Day and night, it is the fuel because it's going to get your mind right. So then when you move forward, you'll be able to discern what's me and what's not of me. So when you turn on the TV, you'll be able to turn it off when you realize that's not God. People are being misled and are, re are, 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 are going in a direction and in, in places because they're ha allowing their minds to have access to information that's not from God. It's the world's information. So now fear gets in. Hopelessness gets in. But when the word gets in, we're not looking at what's happening today in a negative way. We're looking at it as, man, this is the greatest hour for the church. We're not looking at it from the world's point of view. We're looking at it from heaven's point of view, God's word. And we start to get excited about this season, this moment, that this is our hour to rise up and be a solution to a world that needs him. So we don't pull back. We're not hiding. We're rising up and saying, man, there's work to be done. We've been called to be examples, and we've been called to go forward and possess. And all authority has been given to us. And when we are in the word and we're in services like this and we're hearing the word of God, faith starts to rise up. And you're reminded, even myself, I was just sharing earlier, I was reminded last night through uh, last night's service of our assignment and what this church has been called for and words were going forth and you know my, my spirit was just uh, uh, just rising up and just my, it was, I was just being stirred and I was just so encouraged if I wasn't here to hear what was being said through the word of God I would have missed it but because I was here I was receiving the information that was from the Lord and I left this place going, yeah, praise the Lord. There's work to be done. We need to go, we need to take it to another level. We need to roll up our sleeves and get to work. I walked in here and I was joking with everybody on the worship thing. I go, and they're like, man, because everyone was excited from last night, and just, which was awesome, and to God be the glory. It was a great night. And I'm like, and they were all like, you know, kind of like, yeah, yeah. And I came in, and I'm like, I think we can do a little bit better, though, can we? See, because Mina's laughing in Cager, because I kind of to Cager. And he's like, man, you know, I'm like, well, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, huh, we can do better. Well, I, I think we need to do better. Yeah, last night was good, but I think we can do better. <laughs> so something started to stir last night, and it was, a, it, was, it was this. It's like no settling, no pulling back. 
We're going forward, and we're going to go and fulfill the purpose, this assignment, this church that's been called for, the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and the lost. Amen? We're going to feed people. We're going to clothe people. We're going to reach people. We're going to go outside these four walls. And you know what? Praise the Lord. Amen? And we're going to trust God for the rest of it. Amen? But if we don't go now, what are we doing? We're going to wait. wait. We're going to wait uh, 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 another year to see where this thing goes. And by the way, this thing's probably going to be around until Jesus comes back. Anyway, no one wants to hear that, but. Use wisdom. Move forward. Live. Fulfill your purpose. And trust God. I'm going to say it again. We already had it. Families already had the virus. What about if you get it again? What if I do get it again? God's in control. But I'm not locking myself up for a year to see what's going to take place while people are dying and going to hell every day. You understand what I'm saying? Now, don't be leaving this place and all pastors saying, oh, just go out there and do whatever. I'm saying, just, I got my mask. I got it right here. Wear your mask. Do your hands. Do all that stuff. Praise the Lord. I walked into the house last night, and my wife's like, man, Take off everything right there downstairs before you come up. Amen. <laughs> but, but, but understand her heart. She's a warrior. She's a soldier because we made a decision when this all started. This is, this is, this is the hour and, and, and my call, my assignment demands me and my family to be right where we're at right now. And she never wavered from it. And she understands that. And together we've gone and we've, we've been on a plane. We went and ministered, you know, during this time on a plane. And it wasn't being, but it, but it was where God wanted us to be. So we didn't allow fear to hold us back from where the destination that God wanted us to be. Because if we do, the, the effects in the long run, in the mind of depression and hopelessness, it starts to build and build and build. But today, faith is building. Something stirring inside of us, amen? Then, yeah, God's with us. I got to just trust the Lord, keep my eyes on him, and praise the Lord. Just be where I'm supposed to be, doing what God's called me to do, and, God, and, 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 and his will to be done. And God's got the rest. And he's the author and friend of, sure, of my faith, and God will have the final say. So what's happening is, watch this now. If we want to get, and he was, he was talking to Joshua. It's like he's reminding him, hey, I'm with you. But he's saying, but if you're going to be successful and go the distance, you can't do it without doing this. Meditate on my word day and night. And then, watch this. I love this. Then. But then before the then, look at this. Before then in verse 8. Then you will be prosperous, right? But in verse 6, he's saying, be strong and courageous. You're going to lead these people. He's saying, you know, he, he, he's saying, I've given you this land. So here's the promises, and be strong, and I'm with you. But then he ends up saying in verse 8, meditate on my word day and night, and then all this works together to get you to where you need to go. So we could sit here and say, I could sit here and say, man, be strong. I could sit here and say, praise the Lord, God's with you. But if we don't get our minds right, and get the right address or addresses daily, we're going to end up in the wrong place. And then eventually, we want to give up. Look as I'm saying, get the right address. The right verses every day. The right address is the Word of God. You get the Word of God in, you'll get to the right places. Turn real quick. Let me get, let me just, one more thing. Let me just give you one. Yeah, we're talking, uh, I was just thinking about this like the other day because we're going, we went to Apache Junction and we, we put um, an address one time, you know, and, um, and the address we put in, I'm like, I go this, we, and we, we, and we're pulling into, I forgot it was, uh, um, I forgot the, what the place was called. 
I'm like, this doesn't, this isn't the place where that we're, this isn't what it's called. <laughs> I go, we're, 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 I don't think we're in the right place. And it's like, but, but, but Google and whatever her name is on the Google was saying, this is the place. <laughs> And then Sheila's like, did you put the right address in? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's the right address. Long story short, we put back the information again. And, and then when we put the right, inf- the, the, I don't know what happened. But then, but isn't that, it, but we put the information back in there. And then 10 minutes later, we ended up in the, our destination. But we had the wrong information and it took us to the wrong place. You keep watching CNN. <laughs> some of us have made cnn our bible and they got us locked up in our minds we are prisoners not in a physical cell because the information that's been given to us we're not denying there's a virus but all the information and the whole, all the negative reports. President getting up. We've hit this mark of so many deaths. And yes, we're not minimizing that. We should be praying and never get comfortable and say, no. Oh, there goes another per- No. But he's sitting up there talking to the nation about we've hit this mark of so many deaths. My question is, so watch this, and it's in front of us all the time. I'm trying to, you know, I know God's assignment for me right now the last couple of weeks. I've been called to break this thing off our lives because it's damaging Families, relationships, people's purpose, people's destiny. I'm not here saying that this isn't real. All I'm saying is we're magnifying and all you're hearing on the news is just constantly the same thing. My question is to our president, which we need to pray. Doesn't matter who you voted for, we pray. Because that's what the word of God says. But I'm just saying this is what I thinking to myself because I was like oh that's so yeah we need to and, wait a second so we're taking a moment here you're highlighting this but what about the millions of babies that have been legally murdered so we receive that information and it leads us to a destination that locks us up in our minds But no one's crying out on CNN about murdered babies legally murdered. And if you keep on listening to what they're sharing, and it's okay to get some wisdom, you know, to to understand what's going on around us, but if you're not grounded in the word, so you can rightly divide what's God and what's not. We might not be in a physical cell, but we're locked up in our minds. Are you with me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying be reckless. I'm not saying any. I'm saying, but, 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 but we can't. Uh, so whatever's being put in front of you over and over, how about... How about the suicides that are taking place that have increased? Why is that not talked about every day? How about the overdoses that are taking place that have increased since the virus? People going back into the drugs, back into addictions. That have skyrocketed. And the numbers just as great and even more. Why is not anybody talking about the damage is going to be far greater? Not from the virus.
but with the fear and the control. Like I said the other day, and I got to say this, I'm sorry. And I'm like, you know, we've been the wrong, we've been putting in the wrong address. So now the wrong address has you driving in a car by yourself with a mask on. There's no one in the car. Oh my God, I, you know what? Someone's got to say it. And that didn't start overnight. That's meditating and listening and putting in the wrong address, allowing access to your mind to where it has you now a hostage. I put on my mask when I drive my dad to the, 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 the dialysis. He's got his mask on. You know, when he's going dialysis. So see what I'm saying? Here's the balance. I'll put it on. He's got some, he's been through a lot. So we'll just, we'll do the possible. Even if it, let's just say the math. And I believe that, it, 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 I don't know the percentage. You hear so many different things. So I'm sure there is a percentage there that it does help. I'll put it on. But when he gets out of the car, I take off my mask. I'm the only one in the car. But the fear has people like, my God, it's in the air. It's everywhere. I'm, we're walking down the street, and I've seen people running or walking by themselves. No one else is around them. And they got the mask on. And it's like, take off the mask and breathe. You know what I'm doing? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Watch this. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help people get some, 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 some breakthrough. But did you hear what I said? It's very important that you hear what I just said. When I'm driving my dad, I use wisdom. So, the, it's a, so, so, so I'm not saying, did you hear what I'm saying? Look at someone and say, do you understand what he's saying? But how does that happen to where we got, we have a society and even a church that we are, like I said, that we have gone to a place where our faith is stronger, our belief is stronger, our trust is stronger to what CNN is saying than what the Word of God is saying. Oh God, I just said something. I take the information from the world, but then because I'm in the Word, I discern it, I apply what I believe God's telling me to apply with wisdom, vitamins, vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, praise the Lord. Increase it, double it during the season. Praise the Lord. It's not going to, you know, ear on that side. I, I encourage you to do that. Don't be reckless and use wisdom and all that good stuff. But my goodness, how do we get to a place that we go to the grocery store and trust what they're telling you? Oh, all these carts have been wiped down. Really? Maybe some, maybe the majority, but I can guarantee you, if you've been to the grocery and you grabbed a cart, if you haven't done it yourself, they're not all wiped down. They're not all 100% covered. I'm just trying to, I'm going to help you a little bit. Go to the grocery store, you grab stuff, you're putting things in. Others have touched that. Others have put them up there. I see people that are, that are working there, they're not, you know, I remember before, oh, the, the pad when you put your credit card or your debit card and they got this like plastic thing that's been put over. My question is, when was the last time they changed it? <laughs> that, that was my thought the other day. Because I'm thinking, the person before me touched it. I didn't see anybody go across the thing and change it and pull it off and put another one on. So when I went over there, I did the numbers and I'm thinking, <laughs> and they got this plastic, this thing that you're supposed to peel off and put another one on. How often do they do that? Because the person that was before me, they didn't change it. Did you see, that? Did you see the craziness of it? But what did I do? When I went to the car, I have hand sanitizer. And I did, I did the possible after that. But the rest, I got to trust God. When you go to the gas station, I saw it again today, the other day. I was paying attention. I know I said this last week, but I really feel the Spirit of God just trying to help us a little bit to have balance. 
to get out of your jail cell. They're grabbing the thing. They're putting the gas in. They got their mask on, and they're grabbing the knife, and they're putting. And I'm thinking, did you realize that somebody else touched that right just before you? Somewhere you're like, okay, I'm gonna do my part to the best of my ability, but then somewhere I just have to trust God, because this is gonna drive me crazy. And then if I end up going to the wrong destinations in my mind, then it's going to affect my relationships and my family and my children and my purpose and my destiny and my assignments. Are you with me? I want to go back to the abortion situation again. And if anyone's been through an abortion, my wife has, and you've heard her share many times. When you call upon the name of the Lord, God forgives you. And now she's using her story to help others. So I want to encourage you, if you've been through an abortion, to call upon the name of the Lord. There's mercy, there's grace. And that little one's in heaven. And there'll be a reunion. But you move forward. You know how you, where the enemy tried to destroy and take? You can turn around now and help others and prevent others from going and doing the same. Do you see what I'm saying? So don't let the enemy put you down because there's mercy and there is grace. But let's not say it's okay to continue to say that's not a life. The Bible says before we're in our mother's womb, when we're in our mother's womb, and before that he knew us by name. So it grieves me because all they feed us is what they want us to see and hear. And we've made this our God. Like there's never been anything for, uh, worse than this virus. There's other things that are going that are far worse right now, but we're not being affected by it because we're not hearing it. Because what they're putting in is the address they want you to put in your phone. Where's the cry? Where's the cry? Let's just. I refuse to let the system of this world dictate the way I'm going out. Because God's been too good to me. And I should be dead a hundred times over. And my miracle is for somebody else's miracle. And I have to keep going forward. We have to keep going forward. So on the news, I'm going to say another thing. Can I say one more thing? Just a, so we're seeing all these numbers. And, you know, they always show you there's this many more cases. All right. And, 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 and the majority survived. <laughs> all of them survived. And the majority survived. And <laughs> people are dying from all sorts of things. Cause, and, you know, like I said, when the time's up, it's when, if you're where you're supposed to be with God, God's going to have the final say when it's time to go. Amen. So just be where you're supposed to be. That's all. But, but, but watch, but, but, but if we put up all the other numbers of what's happening every, just the regular flu, we just don't hear about it. You can get vaccinated with the flu shot and still get the flu. But we don't hear that stuff. And all the people that have been infected, or all the people that have died from just the regular flu that's been around for years. You know, people have died from just the regular flu. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to fix us a little bit. You can't let... Fear dictates your next step. I'm not saying being reckless, but let's just have some balance. Balance. Because it's affecting us to the point where we can't be effective for the kingdom of God and to help others around us. 
So watch this. So, so I was thinking about this. So going and it's the numbers and this and now it's declined. Then it's kind of up and you know all the, you know and and it's. I'm not saying it's. Not, we're not saying that some of the stuff's not accurate. I'm not saying it's not real. It's just I'm saying, okay, okay. But how about telling us about some other things also that are going on? But, 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 but how about telling us about the depression? How about telling us about the addiction issue now that's, that's become insane since this happened? Because we're isolating people. They need interaction and accountability. Well, they could just go on the computer. Well, that can work for a while, but we need this. And people are going back saying, I just need to check out. I can't do this anymore. And their minds take them somewhere else because they've been isolated for so long. So the, they're, they're telling us, I'm going to say it. They're telling us. We need to come together. We need to all be together. We, we need to, we're going to get through it. Oh, let's just legalize another state of marijuana. You know, you're not, oh my God. Okay, I just. Do you understand the insanity and the contradiction here? We care, the government cares, but. Marijuana is legalized in how many states now in here? Because it benefits money. But they tell us they care about us. We need to help the people. So let's give them some weed. Let's talk about the virus. But glorify the weed helps people with their anxiety. But, but we're not talking about that if we rewind the tape and you talk to people that fall into major addiction, the gateway, the door, almost every one of them said, I didn't start doing heroin. I didn't start doing meth. I didn't start snorting coke. It started with weed. How about putting that on CNN and talking about that, that we're legalizing something that's putting our generation to sleep and leading them into addiction. And you're talking to me about a virus? That later in the future, you ain't seen, we haven't seen anything yet. The byproduct and the effect of what's taking place with legalized weed in the years to come. The future generation. Think about, I mean, not everybody, but the majority where it'll lead to. And if nothing else, you know, have you ever thought about that? Years ago, old school mentality, hard work. The old school mentality of family and conviction. Where's it at today? Because the system is putting us to sleep that the enemy's behind and putting a whole generation to sleep. And that's why you look and you see a lazy generation. And now we see the results in our society and the decline. The love of many will grow cold. Children disrespecting their elders and their parents. But, parent, but, but kids are raising kids. Because what's being inputted into our 
is leading us to all these different destinations because we're not in this. Are you all right? Amen. But do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just trying to say, watch what you're allowing your mind to have access to. And it might not seem to be affecting you in the beginning, but if you allow it to continue to have access, and if it's not from God, eventually it's going to lead you to a wrong destination. If I'm not in the Word, if I don't know the Word or to some level, then I'm listening saying, oh, yeah, you know what? Legalize weed. It's going to help people. Some people that have anxiety. Some people that have a little bit of pain. I'm thinking, what did we do years before that? How do we handle things? And maybe there's that couple cases, a handful of cases, because there's some case. But, but I can promise you, everyone that's lining up outside to go get the weed are not struggling with pain. Uh, so where are the reporters from all these news places or on TV talking on that subject? And you want to talk about a serious uh, outbreak? You don't think that's an outbreak? You don't think that's serious? We might not see it right now, but we're starting little by little in five, ten years down the road. The world we lived in, which already, you look at it and say, man, this isn't the same world I was raised up in. Because we've left the foundation of the word. Driving by the churches. And this, tour, this church is open to everybody. Come as you are. Watch this. I preach the word. And when I'm going to say this, can I say, can I say one more thing and I'm done? I'm just, I, I was just, I was just, all, all I wanted to do was encourage everybody to be here on Wednesday. That's all I was doing. I wasn't even, I just had a thought. God showed me GPL or like the computer, the, the, the um, Google thing. I just wanted to share that. I thought it was going to take 10 minutes. But we're just having a talk. Can we have a talk? Just having a talk. I'm trying, so what I'm trying to say is, so on this subject I'm going to talk about, what I'm talking about is like, we're not looking down on anybody because you know what? Sin is sin. When I talk about sin, when we talk about sin, that the, the God's like, when you lie, it's sin. When, when, you're, when you're walking in pride, it's sin. When you're fornicating, it's sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you steal, it's sin. When, 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 when you murmur and complain, it's sin. When you're in a homosexual relationship, it's sin. It's not homosexual relationship. Oh, they're out. They're, they're separated from everybody. It's all sin is what I'm saying. And the doors are open. But the word of God is clear. I'm driving down churches, and I'm seeing churches with rainbows. In other words, marrying preachers and pastors and priests and and they're saying it's okay, and women and and women are getting married together. Men and men are getting married, married together. And years ago, wouldn't even be a thought. I mean, it's and now how have we arrived? Not just that it's being talked about or on programs. Now churches in America are saying this is God. How did we get to this place? Because the country and our society, and even as parents sometimes, this is just being honest, not watching over our kids, they've been watching what they've been, what the system and the enemy behind the system wants to direct us in. So they put on TV, a man kissing a man, a woman kissing a woman, 
and it didn't, and now it's in your face. It's not even hidden. But it started years ago. I think about like years ago, Will and Grace, that one movie, movie without the show. You didn't see it, but little. And, and it's not, oh, it's just, oh. And now, it's just in your face. Commercials in your face. And our kids sit there and watch it year after year. And it becomes truth. It becomes, oh, this is normal. This is, this is, this is okay. And what's happening is the wrong address is being inputted. And a generation is going to the wrong destination. And it happens little by little. That's why God speaks to Joshua and says, meditate on my word day and night. Because if you do it over and over, then you're going to get the right stuff in. And the right stuff will come out. Can I, give you one, can I just give you a verse? Are we all right? I said, are we all right? Am I the only one that sees this? Are you with me? Are we, are we on the... I feel again in front of the team. You got the leaders in there. Oh my God. And, this, and the poor, the, and it's like this. And it's like, what about the one that just took their life? What about the one? What about the babies? What, are, what, what is it? And what about the ones that are, that are starting to get high right now and, and so easy access? And the government has made it legal. And, and you're going to tell me 5, 10, 15 years from now that everyone's going to be okay? Oh, it's just weed. It's just, it's all natural. Well, you tell that to people that are in programs right now. You tell the one that's in a grave right now that years ago started with weed that opened up the door that gave a foothold from the devil. You understand? Anything that alters your... Are you watching it all? Anything that alters your mind gives access to the enemy for a foothold. It's a starting point. I didn't wake up one day and do meth. All right, I'm the only one who will say it. That's all right, because I've come too far. I have to say it. It wasn't even weed that started. I started with chewing tobacco. A few beers. And then you get that little buzz. And then, and then something pulls you even more to, to want a little more. Because if you're like me, I don't know. A stopping point. That's why God is taking all my liabilities now. And now they become assets. Because when I do something, I do it. I don't know how to... I just do it. This is, you know, not saying I've been perfect in it. I'm just saying I just do, like right now, I'm just doing what I'm, I'm not whole, I'm just, what I got, I'm giving it. But watch this. And then you go, and then you, and then I remember smoking some weed in high school, and, and it wasn't my thing, though. But still, though, seemed innocent. I remember working at the grocery store at Bash's one time, going in the back, had some, a little bit of weed. And it was, I had a break time, and I didn't have anything to smoke in it. I took a can, and someone had showed me how you just, like, do, like, a little, little holes in the can and put, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do I got the right church? Am I speaking to the right church? Are we, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, but I saw, the, but watch this. I want, and what I'm trying to get across is, watch this. Somewhere I got information that I allowed access to my mind. And watch this. It was the wrong information, wrong address. But it stayed there long enough to where it got to my heart. And the next thing I know, I'm by myself in the back in a dumpster during my break time smoking weed with a can of uh, a pop that I and put, did some hole.
you don't think much about it after that. I wasn't smoking weed all the time or anything like that. It wasn't my thing. But doors were opened. The next thing I know, I'm doing a line of coke innocently. That's years later. Could the stuff from the beginning have anything to, is there any connection a little bit? And then I'm doing things that I, I'd watch on TV and say, man, that is crazy. How can anybody get to that place, you know? And the thing that I said I would never do. I'm going to help you because you're looking at a person that's got victory right now. I'm doing, I'm, I'm smoking meth. It's just weed. Really? And all I'm saying is, and for some, they don't get back. Others, it takes their life. Why are we not hearing that today? That you can have 10 people, but I can promise you out of those 10, I'd say about from what I just my personal interaction. My personal interaction, working with Teen Challenge and different programs and my brothers and sisters from prison that have come and God's using it in a great, but just the stories and you hear stuff. Every one of them, almost, e almost every one of them, when we talk about the subject, I'd say 80% will say the drug of choice that started it was weed. Have you ever heard that before? The gateway. So you're going to tell me 10 people that are lining up in that line? Think about that. That probably, let's even say, let's say if it's even, let's say if it's even six out of 10, where it's going to lead. Because don't tell me it's not going to lead to something more. Because then we're being foolish and deceived. So I just said all that to say, let's have some balance in this thing. Epidemic? The numbers are nothing compared to the lives that are being lost to drugs right now. The numbers to the coronavirus are nothing compared to the babies that are being killed every day, daily. And where are their numbers on TV? So I'm not saying don't have hand sanitizer. I'm not saying not to wear your mask when, you know, you know, in situations and places. What I am saying is you're going for a walk by yourself outside and there's no one around you. Take your mask off. Now, did you hear what I, now someone's going to edit that and say, pastor said, take off your mask at fire and water. No, I said, take off your mask if they're by yourself walking outside. And breathe a little bit. If someone comes, if they're, you know, depending on where they're at, be respectful to that person depending on where they're at. I get it. But we have made this thing. And it's, def and it's, and it's deflected and it's taken our focus off. Everything else that's going on around us. Can I read this verse? I'm done. I'm done. I'm just trying to help us. Just, I want to help everybody for us to put the right address in and get to the destinations that God wants you to get to. Live. Because this thing is twisted and has come full circle now to where people, now some, they need to use wisdom and stay home right now. And the online is great for that. But there's others, you are out and about doing other things, and you're telling me you can't come to church? 
You're telling me Costco is safer than here? You're telling me Walmart is safer than here? Oh, my God. And I'm not, you might say, well, I, I haven't got any. Well, okay. If you've been to Walmart and you're telling me and you're, the, and you're here, not here because of what's going on, but you've been to Walmart, You need to start putting in the right information and start putting action to it because it's going to affect you in the long run. It will. It will. We went to outreach yesterday morning. Some of the guys from Teen Challenge were with us also, and they're in recovery and they're in the program. But you could see by the middle of the outreach and the people we were helping and just the fellowship, their spirit, you could see them just like, yeah. It was doing something supernaturally you can't get any other way. You can't get it any other way. And it starts in your spirit, and then it affects your body. It becomes medicine to your body. When they come back, they're saying, thank you for the food. Thank you for coming. And you see people lined up waiting for us to show up with the vans and the food boxes. It does something to you. And you can't get that from a screen. That's like the equivalent of like when you say take vitamins and do your part. That's the same thing. That's like vitamins in the Holy Ghost and the Spirit. That strengthens you. It gives you hope. It gets you out of the funk, the depression, the hopelessness. Because we were made to move. Not to be locked up in a prison in our minds. And in the name of Jesus... In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare those prison doors to open today in Jesus' name. Okay. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. That's all. That's all, it, that's all I wanted. To, I just wanted to finish with this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. 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 You know what that speaks of? It's not about me. about the people around me. Jesus laid down his life, laid it down for you and me. And if we have Jesus in our heart and we take on the nature of Jesus, then we're laying down our lives for others around us because we don't want to see them go to hell. holy and pleasing to God this is your spiritual act of worship and watch this now do not conform any longer I'm just bringing it all home right now do not be transformed or don't do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world the wrong information don't bow down to it Woo! don't Bow your knee. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He didn't bow down. They didn't bow down. Even though they knew it, would, it could cost them their lives to the idol. 
And they were saying, you need to bow everybody in this country. Everybody has the same instructions to bow. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Seth said, we can't do that. And they knew there was a fiery furnace awaiting them. See, the only person we bow down to is the God we serve. And they were thrown in the fiery furnace. But guess what? Even though the intention was to kill them, and it should have, God said, I'm not done with your and with your assignment. Your assignment's not done. So it doesn't matter what's happening or what's going on around you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God was saying, your assignment's not finished, so this is not the end. So the Bible says a fourth man showed up in the fire furnace. They came out on the other side, and when they came out on the other side, they were promoted. Where are my soldiers at? Amen. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Wednesday night, battlefield of the mind. See, I did that. Then, everything I've been talking about, here's the Bible. If you're renewing your mind, right, through the Word of God, then you will be able to test, discern the insanity around you. Can't do it without the word. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing perfect will. Then you'll be able to test and discern and see what's God and what's not God. Turn off what you need to turn off. Disconnect from what you did need to disconnect from. And connect with what you need to connect with. In Jesus' name. Can someone say Amen. So, expect to see if you're not working or you're, there's not something that's come out of the, uh, I'll see you all here on Wednesday night. I, 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 I see everybody, and if we don't see you here, then we'll come find you. I can't, I can I can only do what I can, like someone was telling me, pray, you know, they, someone, was, someone was saying, pray for me, and I get it, we need to pray for one another. But then there's some, some situations, even for myself, I have to remind myself, oh, I need prayer. No, I don't need prayer. I need to get up and get to a place of victory. So, like a, so for some people, it's like, man, I'm going through it. Man, you haven't been in church in months. I'm not going to pray for you. I'm going to give you an instruction from the word of God. Forsake not the gathering of the saints. Put your mask on, get your sanitizer, find a spot that's, that you feel safe with. Now, it's different if you're the, but don't tell me if you're the person who goes to Walmart and it's been eight months since you've been here. You go worship at Walmart. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. So Wednesday night. Well, um, welcome to Sunday morning service. I'm just giving the information, but you need to do your part if you want to move forward. You got to apply it, but you got to learn it and then apply it. And it's, and it's not going to be easy. It's never going to be comfortable. There's going to be a fiery furnace that we have to go through. Buck up in the name of Jesus. I said buck up, little lambs. Little sheep. Sheep. Buck up. I said buck up. What do I mean by that? Come on now. You've been through how much you've been through in your life? And you've come this far? And you faced some, you faced death over and over back in your life? You can handle this fire. I said you can handle this fire. And this fire is a good fire. Because it's actually preparing you, preparing us to finish strong in the name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome to Sunday morning service.
Pastor Tony, you want uh, just um. I'm just thinking about it. Like all our kids are growing up now in a, in a society that's got a store, a corner weed store that's saying it's okay to go get that legally. Yeah, it's like, okay, so if they legalized meth, does that make it okay for me to go do it? Okay, watch this. Do you see what I'm saying? Because some people in the church say, well, it's legal, so it should be okay. So now we got our kids growing up learning to say, okay, that's legal, so I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not breaking the law. Okay, praise the Lord. Amen. I just, just, are you glad you came this morning? It was a good talk, right? Look at someone say, that was a good talk. Could you pray for the offering? We're just going to take the offering and then close, you know, uh, um, uh, do, do a minute, a couple minute worship song. Three minutes, four? Five, seven. Let's do like a, a few minutes, up to five minutes, number of grace, you know. And then I want you to close the service um, in prayer and an opportunity to give your, to everyone to give their hearts to Jesus if they haven't done so. Are we good? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me do this for just in case. I'm just saying. No, because I'm like, I, I, there's always that one that's like, oh, he's saying to just whatever and just whatever and whatever, and he doesn't believe. I didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm not going to be locked up in my brain, though. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, amen. You are, yes. You know, it's, uh, it's real. And it may get raw at times, but that's real. And we need it. We need the truth. We need the truth. It was the truth that set us free one day. And it's the same truth that's being spoken today. Here. So, to be able to tell when someone is lying to you you have to know the truth because the sermon is not knowing the difference between right and wrong the sermon is knowing the difference between what's right and what's almost right almost right is still wrong half of a right it's still wrong. So when we hear it real and raw, it's good for us. It, I, I, you know we're living in insane times. And pastor took the words right out of my mouth when dispensaries are becoming like convenience stores. Or they're replacing your local Circle K. Or they're replacing your 7-Elevens. Where dispensaries are on every corner. And it just... The can story. Oh my God. Real. Real. Because... I can probably count on my hands and I will have fingers left over of those of us in here who God has set free from addiction who didn't start by smoking weed. I would probably have fingers left over on one hand. Maybe a one, maybe two. But if you look back 
of where God delivered us from. It didn't start with that. I, I was just, I, did, I wasn't, I, I didn't just start being a junkie. I started stealing, my friend and I started stealing his dad's roaches from his ashtray. Can I just be real? That's where it started at. And we'd go hide under the palm tree at the park. And that's sad because we were in third grade. <laughs> stealing his dad's roaches. And at the age of 18, I'm sitting there sticking a needle in my arm. So in third grade, I wasn't sticking a needle in my arm. But it started stealing The roaches. Okay, let, let me let me let me let me define roach, okay? Because <laughs> it, it means okay, no. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Because we're in church in the hood, okay? And for someone who don't know, someone might think a roach. What I'm talking about is that little creepy crawly. Ugly, no, 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 no. Okay, let me just clarify what a roach is, okay? All right. It. It looks like it's going to crawl. It's the same color as that crawly thing. But it has no feet, no legs, no eyes. It's what's left. It's what's left on the ashtray. It's the last of the joint. Somebody said... Ooh, God. See what I mean? That's real. When somebody says the best part, that's real. Amen. That's real, church. And the insanity of it is, is that, man, there's a generation being told that it's okay. That it's okay. In, in or and I mean it in a good way, you know. And I mean it in a good because like that's the best part. Yeah, the best part is taking you to the worst part. Oh, the best part is taking you to the worst part. Amen. That's real. And look, church. Look. There are states that have decriminalized narcotics where you won't get in trouble no more. If you have a certain amount, as long as you're abiding the law with that amount. Man, the devil is a liar. The, don't say it. No, no, I just saw, I, I, I saw, no, I'm, I, I, you're right. Now watch this. This is like, this is, this, this is what, listen. Well, think about what he just said right now and what we've been talking about. And the deflection is, we're talking about this while all this other stuff is being passed. And it's not our focus. Years ago, unheard of. The, the, the cry would be enormous. But we're so, because this is what we've been fed, focused on. No one's talking as much now, except for the handful of what you just said. We're not just talking about weed, which was unthinkable. That's on every corner now, it seems like. People lining up to get in. Not lining up to get into the church for eternal life. Hardcore drugs legalized if you're abiding by the law. And little by little, our generation and the young ones are growing up in this. Where are we heading with this? We need to wake up to see what is happening behind the scenes and what is 
because the information, if we aren't careful, is leading us to the wrong destinations. Amen. 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 You know, it's a, it's something that must be said. And we, we as the church, we must speak the truth. And we may stand alone, but that's all right. We are not alone. We are not alone. You may be the only one in your family, but you are not alone. You are not alone. So let's continue. Let's continue putting the right address and our GPS to get us to the right place. And if you don't have a GPS, we have Bibles in the back right there. Okay, oh, we'll, we'll get you a GPS, amen? We'll get you a Bible before you leave here. If you don't have a Bible, just lift up your hand and we will get you a Bible. So if you don't have one, don't leave here. Because you have no excuse after today. You can't say, I never had the right information. Because I believe today is what, the 28th? February 28th, 2021. All of us was given the opportunity to receive the right information. So as we get ready to worship, before we start worship, I, let, let, let's pick up the offering. <laughs> let's pick up the offering. Ushers will come to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for trusting us with the things of God. Watching online, thank you so much. God bless you. Blessings, prosperity, breakthrough, promotion, raises. We pray that that job will come to you. Exceedingly and abundantly what you're even asking or even thinking about. Amen. Daily, the Bible says, he loads us with benefits. So let's pray for the offering. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my Lord. Your faithfulness, your goodness. Thank you for your truth. Thank you, oh God. Oh, Father, we worship you and we glorify you. Father, we come with a heart of thanksgiving and a spirit of charge and of praise unto you, my God. We bring our tithes, our offerings, our sacrifice unto the house of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Use it for your honor, for your glory, that lives will be touched, families will be restored. Bless your people at this time as they give unto you. Bless them, my God. Prosper their ways. Father, and rebuke the devourer, my God, in their lives, oh God, hallelujah. That poverty mindset has to go in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We praise you, we worship you, we glorify you in Jesus' name, amen. Just lift up your offering, the ushers will come to you. Lift up your offering and... Praise God. Hallelujah. The chains fall. Yes. The chains fall. The chains fall. Let the chains fall. Oh, let the chains fall. Yeah, let the chains fall. Yeah.
praise God. I know we're about to dismiss, but before we dismiss, I just want to give everybody the opportunity. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. It was in the beginning. And that's the truth. And it's the truth that will set you free. But it's got to start with you saying, I want that truth. I want that for me, for my house, for my family, my, my situation, for my turnaround, my breakthrough, my miracle. It all starts with receiving the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth. If that's you this morning, just lift up your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. And as we pray right now, let's everyone, let's stand to our feet and let's pray. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I'm tired of being tired. I need the truth to guide me to the right place. So this morning, I come to you as the only truth, as the only way, as the only life. Father, I need you. Wash me, cleanse me, deliver me, set me free from whatever sin is holding me back. I thank you for my miracle, my breakthrough, oh, and my turnaround begins right now. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. Let's not forget Monday night prayer, Wednesday night Bible study, and next weekend, Howard Bell is going to be with us all weekend long. So we'll see you. God bless you. Amen.